seeking drama to escape King Yama. With the transmission of the drama, Shen Kuang received the name Hui Kuo, which means able wisdom. Master Hui Kuo asked Bodhimanda, In India, did you transmit the drama to your disciples? Did you also give the rope and bow as a certification? I transmitted the drama in India, replied Bodhidharma, but I did not use the rope and bow. Indian people are straightforward. When they attain the fruit, they know they must be certified. If no one certifies them, they do not say, I have attained the way. I have given proof to Ash to Ashrib. I have a Bodhisattva. They do not speak like this. Chinese people, however, are different. Many Chinese have the great Vihaka root nature, but there are also many people who lie. Having cultivated without success, such people claim to have the way, though they have not certified the fruit, they claim to be certified sages. Therefore, I transmit the rope and bow to prove that you have received the transmission, guard them well and take care. While the patriarch Bodhidharma was in China, he was poisoned six times. Dharma Master Bodhiruchi and Inaya Master Kuang Tung was jealous of him. They prepared a vegetarian meal which contained an invariably fatal drug and offered it to the patriarch. Although he knew it was poisoned, he ate it. Then he vomited the food onto a tray and it was transformed into a pie of threatening snakes. After this unsuccessful attempt, Borirushi tried again, using an even more potent poison. Again, Bodhidharma ate the food. Then he sat atop a huge boulder and spat out the poison. The boulder crumbled into a heap of dust. In four more attempts, jealous people tried without success to poison the patriarch. One day, the great master Bodhidharma said to Hui Kuo, I came to China because I saw people here with a great vehicle root in nature. Now I have transmitted the drama and am ready to complete the stillness. After his death, the patriarch's body was buried. There was nothing unusual about his funeral. In northern way, to um, 386-532 AD. However, an official called Sung Yun met Bodhidharma on the road to Chungnan Mountain in Tsung Ling. When they met, Bodhidharma was carrying, carrying one tru in his hand. He said to Sung Yun, The king of your country died today. Return quickly, there is work to be done. The official asked, Great Master, where are you going? Back to India, the Great Master replied. Venerable one, to whom did you transmit your drama? In China, after 40 years, it will be core. Sung Yun returned to his country and reported the incident. Recently in Sung Ling, I met the patriarch Bodhidharma who told me that the king of our country had died and instructed me to return to the capital. When I arrived, I found it exactly as he had said. How did he know? His countrymen scoffed. Bodhidharma is already dead. How could you have met him on the road? Then they rushed to the patriarch's grave and found it empty, with nothing inside but one true. Where did Bodhidharma go, no one knows. Perhaps he came to America. Wherever he wanders, no one can recognize him because he can change and transform according to his convenience. When he came to China, he said he was 150 years old. And when he left, he was still 150 years old. No historical references can be found. When Bodhidharma was about to enter Nirvana, he said, I came to China and transmitted my drama to three people. One received my marrow, one my bones, and one my flesh. After the transmission, the patriarch himself no longer had a body. Great Master Hui Kuo received the marrow and Chen Master Tao Yi received the bones. Bishuni Tsung Chu 
could recite the Lotus Sutra from memory. After she died, a green lotus flower grew from her mouth. She received Bodhimanda's flesh. In the end, the patriarch had nobody at all. So don't look for him in America. You won't find him. The second patriarch, Hui Kuo the North Chu, five hundred fifty, five hundred seventy-seven to eight hundred A.D., whose family name was Chu, was a formerly Shen Guang. When he was born, his parents saw Wei Tou Bodhisattva, the golden armored spiritual being, come to offer protection. Thereupon, they named their son Shen Guang, which means spiritual light. Not only was the patriarch intelligent, but he had an excellent memory as well, and his skill and powers of discrimination were so remarkable that he could read ten lines in the time it took an ordinary person to read one. In a gathering of one hundred people, all talking at once, he could clearly distinguish each conversation. The great master, however, had great anger. He disagreed with everyone and was always ready to fight. When Shen Guang explained sutras, as I have told you, he used his iron beads to win his arguments. Later, after he knelt for nine years in quest of the drama, it was his great anger which enabled him to cut off his arm and feel no pain. It was also because of this anger that he later felt pain. And unafflicted by anger, he would have felt no pain. Pain is just an affliction, and affliction is the cause of pain. The second patriarch was forty years old when he left Bodhidharma. Having obtained the Dharma, he went into hiding because Bodhirushi and Vinaya Master Kuang. Two, who had made six attempts on the life of Bodhidharma, also wished to kill his disciples. So, Arthur Hui Kuo had great anger. He nevertheless obeyed his teacher and went into hiding for forty years. When he was eighty, he began to propagate the Buddha Dharma teaching and transforming living beings. Later, the disciples of Bodhirushi and Vinaya Master Kuang Tung. Tried to kill Master Hui Kuo, who feigned insanity to lessen the jealousy of his rivals. But he never ceased to have to save living beings who were ready to receive his teaching. Because so many people continue to trust the second patriarch, Bodhirushi's disciples were still jealous. They reported Hui Kuo to the government, accusing him of being a weird, inhuman creature. He confuses the people who follow him. They trust he's not even human. The emperor ordered the district magistrate to arrest him, and Hui Kuo was locked up and questioned. "Are you human or、uh, are you a freak?" asked a magistrate. "I'm a freak," replied Master Hui Kuo. The magistrate knew that the patriarch said this to avoid causing jealousy, so he ordered him to tell the truth, speak clearly. He demanded, "What are you?" The great master replied, "I'm a freak." Governments can't allow strange freaks to roam the earth, and so Hui Kuo was sentenced to die. Now, isn't this the way of the world? The patriarch wept. When he told his disciples, "I must undergo this retribution," he was a courageous man. Certainly, not one to cry out of fear of death. He was sad because the drama had not become widely understood during his lifetime. The Buddha drama will not flourish until the time of the fourth patriarch. He announced, and then he faced the executioner. "Come and kill me," he said. The executioner raised his axe and saw it towards the master's neck. What did you think happened? You're probably thinking he was a patriarch with great spiritual power. Certainly, the blade shattered and his head was not even scratched. No, the axe cut off his head, and it didn't grow back. However, instead of blood, a milky white liquid flowed onto the chopping block. 
you think, now really, this is just too far out. If you believe it, that is fine. If you don't, do not believe it, that is fine too. Just forget it. However, I will give you a simple explanation of why blood does not flow from the patriarch's neck. When a sage enters the the wide yang realm, his blood becomes white because his body has transformed completely into yang, leaving no trace of yin. I don't believe it, you say. Of course you don't. If you did, you would be just like the second patriarch. When the executioner saw that the master did not bleed, he exclaimed, Hey, he really is a freak. I chopped off his head, but what came out was not blood, but this milky white fluid. And his face looks exactly as it did when he was alive. The emperor knew that he had executed a saint because he remembered that the 24th Indian patriarch Ari Asimha had also seen, had also been beheaded and had not bled, but a white milky liquid had poured forth because he had been without our flows. When one has no ignorance, one may attain to a state without our flows and enter the white yang realm. You think, but you just said that the patriarch Hoi Kuo had great anger. How could he have been without ignorance? You are certainly more clever than I am, for I did not think of this question. But now that you have brought it up, I will answer it. His was not petty anger like yours and mine, which explodes like firecrackers. Pop, pop, pop. His anger was wisdom, and because of it, his body became young. Great patience, great knowledge, great courage, and great wisdom. That's what his temple was made of. Realizing what Hoi Kuo was a Bodhisattva in the flesh, the emperor felt great shame. A Bodhisattva came to our country, he said, and instead of offering him protection, we killed him. Then the emperor had all the great officials take refuge with this strange picture. Thus, even though the second patriarch had already been executed, they still accepted these disciples. The third patriarch, Sun Tsan of Sui Dynasty, was the unknown family name and origin. When he first came to visit the second patriarch, his body was covered with repulsive sores like those of a leper. Where are you from? asked the second patriarch. What are you doing here? I have come to take refuge with the high master and to study and cultivate the Buddha Dharma answered Sun Tan. You have a loathsome disease and your body is filthy. How can you study the Buddha Dharma? Master Hui Kuo was clever, but Diana Master Sun Tan was even more clever. I am a sick man and you're a high master, he said. But in our true minds, where is the difference? Thereupon, the second patriarch transmitted the Dharma to Sun Tsan, saying, This robe and bow have been passed on from Bodhidharma. Would they certify that you have received the Dharma seal? In order to protect it, you must go into hiding because Bodhirutsi's flower, uh, followers, because Bodhirutsi's followers will try to harm you. Be very careful and let no one know that you have received the transmission. The third patriarch, Sun Tsan, also feigned insanity while he taught living beings. During the persecution of Buddhism by the Emperor Wu of the Northern Troll Dynasty reigned from 561-577 AD, the patriarch fled into the mountains. While he hid there, the tigers, wolves, leopards, and other fire animals all disappeared. After transmitting the drama to the fourth patriarch, Tao Xin, Master Sun Tsan invited a thousand bhikshus to a great vegetarian feast. After they had eaten, he said, You think that to sit in Fung Lotus is the best way to die? Watch, I demonstrate in 
my my independence over birth and death the master left the dining hall followed by the thousand bishops he halted by the trunk of a tree and after pausing for a moment he left up and grabbed a big branch then while swinging from the tree by one hand he entered nirvana no one knew his name or his birthplace someone is afraid and thinks the first patriarch the first patriarch was poisoned the second patriarch was beheaded and the third patriarch died hanging from a tree i certainly do not want to be a patriarch is much too dangerous with this attitude even if you wanted to be a patriarch you could not as long as you fear death as long as you fear anything at all you cannot even be a patriarch's disciple patriarchs are not afraid of suffering they are not afraid of life and they are not afraid of death making no distinctions between life and death they run among people teaching and transforming them like for tour and yesha they know that a vision is just a body and that birth and death is nirvana so tell me now who is not afraid of birth and death if there is such a one i will make him a patriarch the fourth patriarch's name was tawsin why very young master tawsin left home under master samtan and for 60 years he sat in dhyana concentration without lying down to rest although he seldom opened his eyes he wasn't asleep he was working at cultivation when he did open his eyes everyone shook with terror why no one knew such was the magnitude of his awesome virtue hearing of the master's great virtue in the 17th year of the chen kuan reign of the tang dynasty 643 AD, the emperor sent a messenger to invite him to the palace to receive offerings. Unlike we common people, we who would attempt to wedge ourselves into the court without being asked, the great master, the fourth patriarch, refused the invitation, saying, "I am too old, and the journey would be tiring." Eating on the road would be too difficult. I cannot undergo such hardship. When the messenger delivered the patriarch's reply, the emperor said, Go back and tell him that the emperor says that no matter how old he is or how difficult the journey, I have ordered him to come to the palace. The messenger returned to the patriarch and said, Master, regardless of your health, you must come to the emperor's court. We will carry you back if necessary. At that time, since there were no airplanes or cars, travel was difficult. No, I cannot go, replied the patriarch. I am too old and ill. Take my head if you must, but my heart will not go. The messenger thought there is nothing to do but to go back without him. I cannot take his head to the emperor. This bishop is very strange. He is hardly human. The messenger then hurried back to the emperor. Your Excellency, you may have the master's head, but his heart will not move. Very well, go get his head, replied the emperor. He put a knife in a box and gave it to the messenger, saying, Slice off his head, but under no circumstances should you harm this bishop. The messenger understood. He returned to the fourth patriarch, Venerable Master, if you refuse to come, the emperor has ordered me to cut off your head, he said. Patriarch Tausin said, If in this life my head gets to see the emperor, that will be great glory, you may remove my head now. The messenger took out the knife and prepared to cut off his head. The great master closed his eyes and waited calmly for about ten minutes. Maybe it was ten minutes, maybe it was nine or eleven. Don't become a text. It is certainly not determined exactly how long he waited, but nothing happened. And finally, Master Tao Sin got angry, just like the second patriarch, and shouted, Hey, why don't you slice off my head? The emperor had no intention of harming you, the messenger quickly replied. 
He was just bluffing. The patriarch heard this and laughed aloud. Then he said, Now you know that there is still a person in the world who does not fear death. The family name of the fourth patriarch was Suma, and his personal name was Sin. Suma was an honorable and sexual name. Both the Emperor Suma of the Qin Dynasty and the historian and skilled writer Suma Qian of the Han Dynasty had this name. When the fourth patriarch became a big shrew, he took a new name, Tao Xin. He lived 72 years, 60 of which were spent without lying down even once to sleep. The fourth patriarch's realm of accomplishment was inconceivable. While Tao Tsin was cultivating, a nearby city was uh, besieged by bandits for more than a hundred days, depriving its inhabitants of water and supplies. Seeing the lives of the people in danger, Master Tao Tsin left his mountain retreat to rescue the city dwellers. He taught them all to recite Mahaprana Paramita. After they had recited for a time, the bandits fled and water reappeared in the wells. This is the response based on the which, on the way which Master Tao Tsin evoked as a result of his superior cultivation. When the fourth patriarch decided to build a temple, he looked with his Buddha eye and saw a broken head mountain surrounded by a purple cloud of energy. Observing this auspicious sign, the master went there to dwell, changing his inauspicious name, Broken Head, to Double Peak Mountain. The master used expedient dramas to teach living beings how to discard their bad habits. These stubborn living beings, however, often discarded what was good and continued doing evil, but the master persisted and by using all kinds of skill in means caused these stubborn living beings to realize their mistakes. He propagated the drama for more than 40 years, transforming living beings greater in number than seedlings of rice, stalks of hemp, shoots of bamboo, or blades of grass. One day, the fourth patriarch said to his disciple, Dharma Master Yuan, I should build, uh, you should build me a stupa, I am going to leave. In the second year of Yonghui of the Tang Dynasty 651 AD, on the 24th day of the ninth lunar month, Patriarch Tao Xin, who had never been ill, sat down and entered Nirvana. His disciples locked his flesh body securely in the stone stupa. A year later, the iron locks fell away and the stupa opened by itself. Looking in, everyone saw the body of the fourth patriarch still sitting in full lotus, appearing the same as when he was alive. The master's body had not decayed, but the flesh had dried out. The fifth patriarch Hung Chen Chen, Hung Chen wrapped the body with lacquered cloth and gilded it. This true body still exists today. The fifth patriarch, Hung Chen, also lived during the Tang Dynasty. His family name was Tro. He lived in Huang Mei County near Double Peak Mountain. When he was seven, he went to the temple on the mountain to attend upon the fourth patriarch. The great master Hung Chen cleaned the lamps and censer before the Buddha images. He swept the floor, carried water, split firewood, and worked in the kitchen. At age 13, he took the ten novice precepts and studied under the fourth patriarch of a 30 years, for over 30 years. The fifth patriarch was 8 feet tall and had an extraordinary appearance. When others treated him badly, he remained silent and unmoved. Because he did not give rise to discrimination, he never spoke upright or wrong, and when fellow bishops bullied him, he never fought back. 
His calm, quiet manner indicated that he had realized a state of peace. Even after working hard all day, the master didn't rest. Instead of sleeping, he sat in meditation, uniting body and mind in powerful samadhi. Master Hong Chen lived in the wood of Ping Mao Mountain, slightly east of Double Peak Mountain, so his teaching is called the East Mountain Dharma Door. Once, like his master, master of uh, the fourth patriarch, he saw a odd abundance besieging a nearby city. Their leader, a Mongol named Ketahan Nalu, and his followers had so tightly cut off the communications that even the birds couldn't fly in or out. The fifth patriarch went down Ping Mao Mountain toward the city. When the bandits saw him, they were terrified, for they saw not only the patriarch but also a retinue of golden armored Vara King Bodhisattvas armed with jeweled weapons, manifesting awesome virtue and brightness. The thieves retreated and the siege broken. How was the great master able to command this Vara King Bodhisattvas? The fifth patriarch had cultivated and he recited the Suragama Mantra. The Suragama Mantra Sutra says that if you are constantly mindful of the Suragama Mantra, 84,000 virus door bodhisattvas will protect you from all danger. In the fifth year of the Xianqing reign of the Tang Dynasty, 660 AD, the emperor invited Great Master Hung Chen to the palace. The master declined the invitation. The emperor sent a second invitation, which the master also declined. Finally, the emperor sent a variety of gifts, including rare medicinal herbs, as an offering to the great master, the fifth patriarch. In the fifth year of the Shen Xiang reign of the Tang Dynasty, 600. 74 AD, the fifth patriarch said to his disciple, Master Xuan Chu, build me a stupa, I am going to leave. In the second month, on the fourteenth day, he asked, Is the stupa ready? Master Xuan Chu replied that it was. The patriarch said, For many years I have taught living beings. I have taken across those whom I must take across and have transmitted my drama to Hui Neng, the sixth patriarch. Now, in addition, you ten should become Dharma hosts and establish Bodhidharmas, Bodhidmandas to preserve and spread the teaching among living beings. The ten he addressed were Dharma Master Shen Xiong, Qi Xian, Ai Fang, Yi Fang, Chu Tse, Chuan Chu, Lao Yan, Fa Chu, Hui Chang, Xuan Yao, and also Upasaka Liu Chu Pu, who had dealt uh, with correspondence and accounting. The fifth patriarch sent each of these ten people to a different, different place to teach and transform living beings. Shortly thereafter, he sat very still and his energy dispersed as he entered Nirvana. During the 74 years of his life, the fifth patriarch Hong Chen had ascended many disciples and had transmitted the drama to the great master Hui Neng.